Hello, warriors. Good to see all of you. Um, recently, I had posted some information in regards to apartments, but it was based on an article where they were having trouble with their elevators, and some of the members were, were stuck um, because the elevators weren't being repaired or maintained. So I wanted to dive a little bit more into apartment seeking and homes and the ADA. So I wanted to put more information in there so that you would have more to chew on because the last one was really based on that particular article, which you know I do at times. So, you know, when you are looking for an apartment and not necessarily a home, we'll go through the details of homes. But, you know, safety has to be like up here, your priority, <laughs> safety, no matter what. So think of those things in which you don't feel safe or you would not be safe, um, definitely not safe. So you really need to consider a few things. And there's a, a, quite a few articles that I found that are really, really good. So I will follow some of these uh, um, lists because really you need to put a list together when you're looking for a new home or a new apartment. So first I'm gonna tackle apartments. So there is a list here from apartment list for accessible apartments, and the list is pretty good. So um, I'm gonna go just go down and briefly, you know, choose the right city and neighborhood, uh, gather your resources for apartment applications, so they're gonna ask you, you know, all kinds of stuff, your ID, um, you know, especially if it's low income, they're gonna ask proof of income, that kind of thing. So you wanna gather those kind of uh, document, documents that you will need for your search. Um, organize your proof of income. So and we said that already, start your handicap accessible apartment search. And then it has a whole um, diagram here in which, you know, studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, so, and it has a tiny list. So it's like a, a chart that they're putting in there. Check non-for-profit and federal programs. And I can tell you right now for apartments, that's very difficult because nationwide, uh, there is a scarcity of um, apartments for the disabled, so it is, uh, we're, you know, HUD is having uh, difficulties. HUD sometimes will build accessible apartments. Uh, sometimes they will contract with particular um, landlords who uh, have accessible apartments. So it, it just depends. So, but they, there is still a scarcity no matter how you slice it, and there's usually a waiting list for any of these apartments. So uh, sometimes you have to put your name in the hat early so that when your name comes up, you're, you're ready to move. So book apartment tours and look for accessible features. So that's really important. I wanted to review this particular list. If you can't, if you have difficulty reading, then I will verbally put it here on the video. So. Uh, you want to look at wide doorways and entryways. You want to check the elevators. And this is really important that if you are you have mobility difficulties, try to make sure they don't put you on second floor, third floor, sixth floor. <laughs> May they put you on first floor, if at all possible. And, and check and see what is their schedule for maintenance of these elevators. Um, so that's, that's really... Uh, you can really start to get a sense of responsibility from the managers in regards to elevators and electricity and, and just the maintenance in general. Entrance ramps inside and outside, accessible sinks and low counters, sink, single lever faucets, easy access to appliances with knobs in the front or large font, hardwood floors, rocker light switches, front loading washer and dryer, grab bars, handicap parking, door handles uh, instead of door knobs, 
personal alarm system. Ask questions to your potential landlord, and it is the following. Are there any future renovation plans for the building that make it more or less accessible? Are you familiar with my right to make reasonable modifications to my space, which is really important? Uh, where are ramps located? Are there handicapped parking spaces? If I require modifications, do you require an additional down payment for returning my unit to its original condition when I move out? So that's an important question. What is the best way to communicate with you? Are common areas in the apartment building ADA compliant? So apply, and then move. <laughs> so, so that's that's this particular uh, listing. It has um, links where you can take a look at reasonable what is reasonable accommodations, questions to ask when uh, renting an apartment. So it has a list for that. So it has links within the article. So I think it's going to be a really good tool uh, to take a look at. And there are several others that I've put in there. Um, but truly, uh, and I have some others. Um, I won't go through all their lists, but it says the ultimate wheelchair accessibility checklist. So it's a very uh, complete uh, listing and descriptions uh, and it has a wheelchair accessibility checklist in it, and it's, it's pretty thorough. So I won't go through it because it's a pretty long article, but at least you can educate yourself if you're looking for a home. So this is a, a bigger uh, article for home buyers. Um, the ADA, I'll leave in there the ADA checklist for existing facilities. So this is for facilities that if you're looking at the facility itself, um, this is uh, all kinds of uh, rules and regulations that should be already in the building. Requirements for state and local governments, requirements for places of public accommodation, priorities for accessibility, uh, 2010 ADA standards for accessible design, safe harbor construction prior to March 15, 2012. So it has a whole bunch of rules and regulations that you can look through and see what applies to you. What this checklist is not. So, uh, and it says clearly, the ADA Title II and Title III regulations require more than program accessibility and barrier removal the regulations include requirements for non-discriminatory policies and practices for the provisions of auxiliary aids and services such as sign language interpreters for people who are deaf and material and braille for people who are blind. The checklist does not cover those requirements. Since this checklist does not include all of 2010 standards, it is not intended to determine compliance for new construction or facilities being altered. So, so that's that's you'd have to go to Title Three and Title Two if you wanted to look a little bit more in depth for the, the blind and the deaf. Um, but it's a good tool to to have available. Uh, I have another checklist here for homes. And modify your house with our home accessibility checklist. So it has all kinds of measurements. Uh, it's a good, you know, outdoor modifications for garage, parking spaces, walkways and ramps, uh, doorbell and mailbox, front door entrance modifications, bedroom modifications, closets, so uh, bathroom modifications. So it has all the measurements that you need there. Uh, toilets. Uh, sink, shower, bathtub, kitchen modifications, cabinets, countertops, sinks, appliances, miscellaneous modifications. So it has all the measurements in there for you uh, so that you can um, 
be sure to, to have not only the tools, but um, the descriptions of, of how, uh, how much usually. So, so these are all the tools. I just want to say that safety is really a priority. When you're looking at apartments and you're looking at uh, purchasing a home to make sure that it's going to be a, a safe place for you um, in terms of, you know, how is the house built? Where is it built? Uh, you know, does it have stairs? Do you care if it has stairs? Uh, can you get something that's all uh, one floor? And what is the condition of the house? Uh, how old is the home? What difficulties are present in the home? Have somebody who is in construction to help you take a look. If you're purchasing a home especially, have somebody who is involved in inspections that is a friend or someone who you know um, to help you check a home and give you some feedback. Because sometimes when the builders or the owners uh, hire someone, sometimes they don't put everything in the reports. So just so you know, because that happens more times than we want to admit. Uh, so... And there's all kinds of listings, you know, making your home more accessible, a checklist, hunting for a handicap accessible apartment. So, uh, you know, there's tons of tools, but I'm certainly going to leave these tools and, and the best listings, lists that I can find. So you can take a look at what you should be looking for. And my bottom line is safety. Is what you are looking for, is it affordable? First of all, and don't live beyond your means, but is it affordable and uh, for you and for uh, you to look at the, the safety of where that apartment is located? Is it convenient? Uh, you know, and I know that sometimes we can't be too picky uh, but, you know, look for bus routes. Uh, is there accessible rides uh, from the place where you're going in case your car breaks down? Or if you need accessible rides, you know, is that uh, available in that area? So there's quite a few things that a list that you need to make for yourself um, so to make sure that whatever you pick out uh, is is you know, appropriate for your health needs. Not just, you know, not to just look at one thing or the other, but transportation is a big one. And being able to um, get to your doctor is another one, so, or to your job. So I'm also finding here apartment viewing checklist. So, you know, it says bring to viewing. So this is a list you can bring uh, with you, and it has all kinds of check boxes of things that you should check and ask about. So, you know, phone, camera, take pictures, phone charger to test outlets. Uh, so it has some really, really good tips for you to uh, look at so that you don't miss anything. So that you don't, you know, sign on the dotted line, and then all of a sudden when you get there, it's like, oh, darn, I didn't ask about this, or oh, shoot, how do I get to the laundry? Or, darn it, is there a parking spot for me? You know, I didn't ask about that. So this is, this is a very comprehensive list that you can, and don't rush it, you know. Schedule these tours and schedule the visit to these apartments or to these homes with plenty of time so that you have enough space and and uh, to allow yourself to think and look at your checklist. So that's really, really important um, for you to be safe because sometimes people rush it and then they skip over a whole bunch of things and then sign on the dotted line and then once you're there, it's like, oh, I didn't ask about this. Oh, this is broken or this is, you know, so, so it's really important to, to take your time if you're searching for one. And if you have, if you are in an apartment, you have the right to modify. Um, modestly, you know, not that it would become a burden on uh, the owner or the, the manager. So, 
So those are kind of, kind of things, rules and regulations you need to look up, and that's why I'm adding the ADA in there so you can take a look. Um, the other articles also have little tips here and there uh, so that you know what your rights are. And I'll also find an article and post that of your rights uh, when you have a disability and you're looking for a home or for an apartment. So this is, this is really a heavy duty one because it's very hard to find apartments and homes that are accessible. It is true you can purchase a home and, in, and add in the accessibility, but it's gonna cost you. <clears throat> so when you're looking at the price, you know, see if you can bring down that price so you have some money left over so you can make those modifications and not end up bankrupt, you know? So um, sometimes people luck out and they find a home that's already the accessibility is already included. So, you know, just know that if you plan or you're hoping to move to an accessible apartment, you need to put in your name in the hat early because uh, it's very difficult to find apartments or homes that are accessible. Uh, and for homes, uh, bargain with the price because you're going to have to make some modifications if it's never been modified for a person with disabilities. So that is what I have to say. And anything you look at, anything, you have to consider your safety in terms of the location, the weather, uh, your doctor's office, uh, hospitals, transportation, you know, any of that. So. Uh, accessibility for other people who want to come to see you. So I'll leave it at that. If you, if we want to continue the conversation about housing, we certainly can. Uh, if people want to share their experiences, uh, please do. Uh, if you have um, questions about how do I go about X, Y, Z, uh, feel free uh, to uh, put that in the hat. Uh, post it down below and, and we can start a conversation about, you know, what are the critical things that I need to watch out for. And I'm going to post a whole bunch of links where you can open the article and find, you know, a list, recommendations, the ADA, all that kind of stuff. So you can you, and save the video so that, you know, later down the road, if you're planning on moving, that you have it there, you can open it up. Oh yeah, Lisa, she made a video on that. And there's a whole bunch of links in there. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna click on those links and, and download those lists that she gave us. So um, so be ready uh, to make out some, some print ups, printouts <laughs> and, um, and get ready for that apartment or home hunt. <laughs> All right. Take care, warriors, and I'll see you in the next one.